Hi there, and welcome back to another of our daily devotion series. Uh, we are so glad that you've joined us today as we continue on talking about the names of God. Uh, today, we are spending time looking at Jesus as light of the world. Now, this is one a lot of us are pretty familiar with. Uh, we've heard it a lot and even maybe used it a lot. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what it means that Jesus was the light of the world and what that means for us as his followers. And so we'll start with our text out of John chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. <clears throat> the Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. And so here, of course, there's a further explanation, but Jesus begins by declaring, I am the light of the world. And then he tells us, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we know there's a lot of symbolism um, with light. You know, light is multifaceted. It can be an object that shines like the sun or a lamp. We also know that light is what dispels the darkness. It's what illuminates a path before us. In the Old Testament, light was an image for God's salvation. It also represented divine gifts such as God's guidance or truth or God's word. And of course, we know that the opposite of light then is darkness. And so light and darkness are these two dual opposing forces and figures where light is associated with life and death and darkness go together. And so Jesus is telling us and his followers that he gives light. It says that Jesus gives light on the path to life. And we know that because he is that life. He is life. And we are invited then to live in the light that he brings, which of course means to live in him. And so for us, we have to consider what that looks like um, for us to live as though Jesus is the light. You know, it's easy, I think, in these times, as in all times in humanity, for other things to be our light, you know, even good things, things like family or friends or our job or our physical health, we often try to live as though those are the light, as though those are what will give us life and light. But in truth, of course, we know that Jesus is the thing that brings light, that brings truth. Jesus is the person who gives that to us. Um, biblical scholar Marianne May Thompson says it this way. She says, God's teaching, God's revelatory word finds its fullest embodiment in Jesus, who is the word that is the light of life for all the world. And so for us, our response is kind of twofold. First, how are we seeking the light? How are we living in light? How are we choosing to follow Jesus, to seek him first, to pursue that <clears throat> sunshine, that warmth, that way of living where things are clear, 
where our path is lit and safe? It's a difficult question because there are many things that call our attention elsewhere. It's easy to get caught up in other things, to get caught up in other shiny objects. Um, you know, I think of, <laughs> of those animals or children even who will respond to anything shiny. Um, and I think even us as adults have a similar tendency. Um, when something is shiny or bright, it's attractive to us. And we can get caught up in following that and pursuing that rather than seeking Jesus. And then, of course, as we seek Jesus and as the light of the world, as the one who gives the light of life, what does it mean for us to then turn that outward and receive it for ourselves, but then reflect that light into a world, a world that we know is filled with darkness, that's filled with people who don't know that Jesus is the light, that Jesus is the one who satisfies, that Jesus is the one who makes all things fulfilled, who is the one who fulfills all promises, the one through whom we are able to have abundant life. It's, it's an interesting thing to consider. Uh, you know, as the seasons have changed and as now these past few weeks, it's been hot and warm. We've probably, many of us, been spending time out in the sunshine, kind of basking in the warmth. Um, if you're like the teenagers I'm hanging out with, they are basking in the sunshine and getting that tan, uh, sometimes a sunburn. Um, and, you know, I think about what would it look like if we lived our lives where we were seeking to bask in the light that is Jesus. I wonder how it would change our interactions uh, with our friends, with our family, with the cashier or the clerk at the store or the barista at the coffee shop. If we were intentionally basking in the light, soaking that in, absorbing it, how would that change us? If we lived like this is true, like Jesus is the light, what would change in our lives? Well, I think for one thing, we would probably find ourselves a lot less comfortable because as much as we enjoy the warmth and the heat that the sunshine brings or that we experience in light, Jesus also invites us into some hard places. He invites us to follow in ways that don't match up with the logic or even the darkness of this world. You know, how often when we choose to go the extra mile, uh, does someone not understand that? They can't comprehend. Why would you sacrifice yourself or sacrifice your convenience or sacrifice your comfort for someone else? It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. And yet it, that is exactly the kind of living that Jesus invites us into. And so my hope and prayer today, as hopefully the sunshine is out, that as you enjoy the warmth and the light, that you ask God what it is that he has for you in this. Where is he calling you to step out in light? What areas of your life need to absorb more light? Are there areas that you are trying to hide in the darkness? That you are trying to hide away from the light of life. What would it look like then to bring those into the light, to let go of the darkness and surrender to Jesus? Mm. I think it would cause things to look pretty different. I think there would be some big changes that come. So my hope and prayer is that you are able to find some space to do that to ask God in the light what it is that he has for you, where God is calling you or inviting you to live more fully into the promise that Jesus is the light of the world and that we, when we follow him, do not have to walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let's pray. Holy Lord, you are amazing. We thank you for this life-giving light 
that you have provided in your son, Jesus. Help us to step into the light. Help us to be children of light, to be ones who are willing to shed the darkness, to leave behind the shadows and vulnerably step into living as you have called us, following this path of light and life. We love you, Lord, and know that you equip us for this work. You equip us for this call and this way of life. Help us to trust in you, to surrender to you, and seek you first. It's in the name of Jesus, the light of the world, that we pray. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great day and hope to see you soon in person, hopefully, and I'll be able to give you a hug and say hello. We miss you. We think of you often and uh, we're praying for you.